Welcome, true believers and newcomers alike. Yes, I stole that intro from Stan Lee's intro to the Spider-Man game from PlayStation and Nintendo 64. But the fact of the matter is, it kind of serves a purpose because this video is all about me taking great, beautiful things that people more talented than myself have made and doing them myself with my own little twist. Welcome to Season 4 of Marvel United. So I've been teasing this video for a while. Uh, it's just been taking a long time to put together and uh, you know polish and make sure everything is fancy. But what I have essentially done here is I've done what I'm, I'm not the first person to do this. Let me be clear. Every Marvel United fan has probably done the exact same thing. But I thought, hey, I have people I like to sit on YouTube with and chat about this game with. So why don't I make a video about it? But what I have done is I have put together my own ideal wish list slash uh, just compilation of what a Marvel United Season 4 might look like. And rather than just go sort of the obvious route that I think most fans are doing, which is just, here's characters I want. That's I did that. I did fill it with characters I want. But I tried to throw a bit more detail into it. I tried to treat it like an actual Simon Kickstarter campaign event. So after cobbling everything together, I came up with a fully fleshed out season four. However, there's some things I didn't do. And I'm gonna walk through what I did before I show it off to all of you wonderful people. Here's what I did. Just like any of the other seasons that Simon has actually made, this hypothetical season four will include a core box, right? You can't have a season without a core MU box that you could purchase at a retailer. A bunch of Kickstarter expansions, some of which are exclusive, some of which will go to retail, whatever, that doesn't really matter. But a bunch of expansion boxes. A particular expansion box that deals with a sort of final boss villain, if you will. Season one had Thanos, season two had Apocalypse, season three has Galactus. A giant Kickstarter stretch goal box full of delicious characters you won't find anywhere else, plus the various locations and additional game modes that are packaged in all of the above. That's right, I have worked all of that out. The only thing that I didn't work out is the rules and minutia of how each and every character works. And the reason I didn't do that is because A, it involves a little bit of math and that's not what I do on this planet. Math is just not my thing. And B, there are people out there who are way better at building custom characters from the ground up than I am. People like Diversion Architect, people like my friend the Meeple Monkey, right? All the people on the Marvel United Discord, they are making some great characters from scratch. Uh, in fact, I submitted uh, a couple of these characters I worked on with the Meeple Monkey if you watched our crossover video. And if you didn't, you can watch that right now. I'll put a link in the description below. We took a couple of the characters from this season four and tried to make them and figure out how they would play. Uh, but people are doing that way better than I ever could. So I, I'll just leave that in their capable hands. I am just here to present the flashy, shiny ideas of what this campaign would look like. And if at the end of the video, you look at this and say, I would pledge that, hey, Maybe we're onto something here. And I mean it when I say this is my ideal season four, though I did integrate some characters and some things that I don't particularly care about one way or the other, but I know a lot of fans do. So I tried to give some love to the community here. So some of what other people besides me want, I have found room to throw into season four. And the best part is, I find that a lot of times when fans tend to do this, we tend to go over the top and shoot for unrealistic expectations. Well, I, who would, normally I'm guilty of that very, very much, I didn't do that this time. And we ended up with a perfectly reasonable season four that is pretty much the same size as season three. This entire season will contain 60 hero miniatures, 50 villain miniatures, and 10 anti-hero miniatures. Realistic, right? It will work. It's not going to break Simon's bank. And with that being said, Simon, Spin Master, if anybody out there is watching this, I'm going to put a legal caveat right here. Make sure your lawyers watch this part, okay? I, Andrew Fantasia, being of sound mind and body, 
declare here on camera with however many witnesses there are listening that you, Simon Spin Master, may absolutely take this idea that I present forth here and use it for a season four of Marvel United. And I ask for no monetary compensation whatsoever. All I ask is if you do that, can you like send me a free all-in copy of the campaign? Give me an all-in copy for free? I'll, I would love that very much. That's it. There you go. Legal, it's taken care of. <laughs> uh, who knows? Who knows if that'll happen? But I don't want to delay any longer because this is already going to be a big video. So I'm going to walk you through step by step the Marvel United Season 4 campaign that I have come up with, starting with the core box because that is the perfect place to start. Please put on a pot of coffee if you haven't done so already, and let's talk Marvel United Midnight. Yes, every season has had its own theme, the first one being MCU, really, if we're being honest, season two being all about the X-Men, and season three having the loose theme of multiverse, it was only fair to have a theme for season four. And since so many cool characters from the supernatural side of Marvel have still been left out of this game, I couldn't have found a better theme than the world of the mysterious and the unknown. And thus we have Marvel United Midnight. Now, if I was as talented as the person who drew all the art for the game, you'd be looking at a totally different video. So forgive me for the haphazard way this is going to look, but it's the best we can do under these circumstances. Let's talk about the core box. What comes in Marvel United Midnight? Well, every core box has 10 minis, and this is no exception. In the Marvel United Midnight core box, you are getting the following heroes. Brother Voodoo, Clea, Karma, Manphibian, Nico Minoru, and Shaman. You're also getting the following villains, Lilith and Mordo. Topping it all off, two anti-heroes, Agatha Harkness and Strange Supreme. All of these characters perfectly encompass the theme of Midnight, of Marvel's supernatural, shadowy world. Many of them, like Nico Minoru and Mordo and Agatha, are characters that have really been hotly demanded by the Marvel United community, so this all just seemed like the perfect mix. You have the same amount of heroes, villains, and anti-heroes that you got in the X-Men core box, so there's nothing too out of left field or just unrealistic about this. It will also, like any core box, come with eight new locations that fit with this supernatural theme still. We have Kamartage the Mirror Dimension, the Dark Dimension, Salem, Port-au-Prince, Bloodstone Manor, Kun Lun, and Wendigo's Woods. All in all, this is a slick core box that I would be dying to get my hands on. And it's only the core box. There's only more to come from here. So let's jump to one of the expansion boxes. And I'm going to start with the two expansion boxes that are made up of characters that I don't particularly care for, but I know the fans do. We're going to start with those. I'm going to get them out of the way first and then move on to the ones that I find a bit more juicy. So the first box that I based entirely off of the demand of other fans is plain and simple Runaways. That's it. It's the Runaways. Why not? We've got Nico Minoru in the core box already. We want to flesh out that roster. I know plenty of people absolutely love the Runaways. I don't care about them one way or the other, but I want to give love to the people who do. So here we go. We've got this box. You've got a bunch of minis. The heroes, Alex Wilder, Chase Stein, Gertrude Yorks, Carolina Dean, and Molly Hayes. And then you've got one villain. However, that villain comes in the form of of six different minis. The villain is the Pride, who I had to look them up because I don't know much about this particular part of the Marvel Universe, but the Pride is the Runaways' parents, and each pair of parents is represented by a different mini. The Thieves, the Travelers, the Colonists, the Wise Men, the Outcasts, and the Magicians. The Pride works kind of like a Sinister Six unit where you've got these six minis scattered across the board and each one of them does different things. Sometimes some of them move, sometimes some of them don't. That's for the more design heavy minds to interpret. I just put the minis in the boxes here. The Runaways box will also come with three new locations, the Hostel, Griffith Observatory, and Los Angeles. 
now the Runaways fans will have almost the complete set, but we'll get to that a little bit later. The second and final expansion box that is more in the line of what other people want to see is going to be an X-Men themed box. Because yeah, there's still mutant characters we haven't seen in the game yet. Specifically, this box is called Generation X. It comes with four heroes, Kid Omega, Mondo, Skin, and Sink. And one villain, the dastardly fellow by the name of Bastion. We got trickles of Generation X all throughout the multiverse campaign and people were pleading for all of the characters here. So I figured let's give the people what they want. Let's flesh out Generation X. And now we have. This expansion also comes with two new locations, Massachusetts Academy and the Sentinel Headquarters. All right, now it's time to get into some of the other expansions, primarily the ones that have me very excited. The first of these expansions is going to be one that I think a lot of people will see coming. Please put your hands together for Lady Sif and the Warriors 3. Simple little box, but full of stuff that is missing from our beloved game. It comes with the heroes Lady Sif, of course, Fandral, Hogan, and Volstag. And the villain is everybody's favorite dark elf, Malekith. Looking bright and colorful like his comics version, not like he looked in Thor The Dark World. Completing this whole sexy Asgardian package is two locations, the Asgardian Mead Hall and the Asgardian Arena. Following this is an expansion box that I know a lot of people probably don't care about, but to me it was really important that we get these characters in here because I like them a lot. And that is the Eternals. The Eternals box comes with four heroes, Ajak, Makari, Cersei, and Sprite, as well as one villain, Crow, and one anti-hero, Druig. According to the Eternals comics, Druig is a bit of a troublemaker, so here you go. It's perfect. And I love the idea of keeping the versions of them that are more modern, like the ones we saw in the movies, because they're just so cool, right? They're, they all look like an action figure. I love the Eternals. Uh, and this is going to come with five new exciting locations from Eternals lore. Olympia, Lemuria, Titanos, Polaria, and the Exclusion. Next is a box that some people might think is going to be a little bit of overkill, but for me, as a Spider-Man fan, this was a box that needed to happen. Please welcome Spider-Man's Lethal Foes. Just like our Maximum Carnage box, this is a box full of Spider-Man villains, particularly the ones that we just haven't gotten around to seeing yet. It's also the first box we touched upon here that's going to have a miniature with some of that special translucent effect stuff that they add. Spider-Man's Lethal Foes contains the following villains, starting with Hydro-Man, who is one of the ones I was most excited for. And spoilers, Hydro-Man is the character who, uh, one of the characters at least, that I talked about with Meeple Monkey, where we tried to figure out exactly how he would work. And now, from what I hear, Meeple Monkey and his pals over at the Marvel United Discord are going to try to make a homebrew Hydro Man based on what we made. I'm so excited to see it in action. And Hydro Man is the first miniature in our hypothetical season four here that is going to have this special water effects because it's Hydro Man. Of course, he needs it. He needs the water effects. The box is also going to come with the Jackal, He's going to get his own villain piece where he's not tied into the High Evolutionary. Mr. Negative, Swarm, Tarantula, and Tombstone. Plus, if you pledge, you will get the Kickstarter exclusive additional villain, Beetle. Yeah, the Kickstarter exclusives are, are kind of a strange thing. And I threw a few in here just to, you know, make it feel a bit more uh, true to life. But there you have it. Spider-Man's Lethal Foes. Most of the main Spider-Man villains that I still wanted to see in the game. And yes, of course, all of them will come with modules so that you can add them into the Sinister Six assembled mode. Because, of course, they will. But there are still more juicy expansions, and the next one harkens back to the least well-received cartoon from the Fox 90s roster, namely Iron Man's cartoon. I'm talking about Forceworks. Forceworks was Iron Man's team who, you know, just helped Tony Stark out when they took on the forces of evil. And Forceworks has some characters that uh, it, it's a little bit of a healthy mix here, people I wanted to see, and then a few surprises thrown in. So Forceworks is going to contain the following heroes. Century, 
Rescue, the Julia Carpenter version of Spider-Woman, and, by popular demand, Hawkeye in his classic uniform. Forceworks also contains two villains, Living Laser, who is going to come with translucent effects that are purple, and Titanium Man, who, if you're a Paul McCartney fan, you know he also enjoys a good Titanium Man romp. That's a deep cut Wings reference. And Force Works will contain the following locations to cap it all off. The Works, Moscow, Hong Kong, and Tony Stark's private jet. And just like with the characters, I'm not going to bother going into what each location's uh, abilities are. Because again, smarter people than me can figure that out and make it thematic and make it work. I'm just here for the glossy stuff. <laughs> After... Force works. We are moving into an expansion that has me very excited. This taps into the wonderful world of the Incredible Hulk, a world not quite yet completely mined in Marvel United. This is Gamma World. And thematically, because Bruce Banner is a normal guy who suddenly has the tables turn and he turns into a giant monster, I thought it would be fun to take Gamma World and flip the idea of a quote-unquote normal expansion on its head. Normal expansions have a handful of heroes and one villain. This is actually the opposite. Gamma World has one hero and a handful of villains. That one hero is A-Bomb, the blue good version of Abomination when Rick Jones gets irradiated. That's who we're dealing with here. And then in terms of villains, first of all, we have the villain who has been sorely missed for three seasons now, the leader. The leader needed to happen. He's happening. After the leader, we've also got Red She-Hulk, who is actually going to be red, unlike Red Hulk, which kind of makes me happy. Zemnu, this big giant snowman looking dude who apparently is a big deal in the Hulk comics. And Zax, a being made out of pure electricity. And his mini is, of course, going to be wild, translucent, and yellow and look very cool. But wait, there's more. Gamma World will also come with the Kickstarter exclusive hero, Scar, Son of Hulk. This is a big box o hulks Gamma World also comes with two new locations, Freehold and the Gamma Lab, because that's kind of a given. The last of our normal expansions in Marvel United Midnight is a big deal for me. It's taking something that Multiverse did exceptionally well to roaring applause and applying it to simply a different part of the Marvel world. Please give a warm Evil welcome to the Masters of Evil. The Masters of Evil box is full of villains, hence the name. It contains the following dastardly do-batters. Arnim Zola, the Crimson Cowl, Madam Mask, Tiger Shark, who comes with his own water effects on his mini, and the classic Whirlwind. I love this guy. We needed him in the game. It also comes with the locations Castle Zemo, Atlantis, and AIM Headquarters. But wait, there's more. Just like that original Sinister Six box, the Masters of Evil can each be played separately as individual villains, or you can pop them together to make the five villain Masters of Evil team. The Sinister Six assembled mode was pretty much a flawless idea that everybody loved. And I figured, why let a good thing go to waste? Because, see, the thing is, there's more than one revolving door villain team in the Marvel Universe. So, the Masters of Evil box will not only contain all of the aforementioned villains, but it will contain, drumroll please, Masters of Evil Assembled mode, which is a Kickstarter exclusive mode. You get a new mode to play where you face off against five members of the Masters of Evil. And all of the aforementioned villains have been part of it at one point or another, so they all come with their own modules to be inserted into Masters of Evil mode. This will function somewhere between the Sinister Six and the Cabal, right? Just five villains out doing their thing and you gotta stop them. Masters of Evil mode will also come with modules for villains from previous seasons, including Zemo, Enchantress, Claw, Dr. Octopus, and Moonstone. They can all be swapped in and out of it. And yes, all those villains were at one point part of the Masters of Evil, so it all fits thematically. So that does it for all of the normal expansions in Marvel United Midnight. But we still have one expansion box left. And it's a little bit more than normal. It's paranormal, if you will. As I said before, every season has had a final boss battle 
expansion, for lack of a better term. You had Infinity Gauntlet in Season 1, you had the Horseman of the Apocalypse in Season 2, and you had the Coming of Galactus in Season 3. So what do you do for Season 4? How do you take Marvel United Midnight and give it a final be-all, end-all villain? You know where I'm going with this. It's Mephisto. Here he is. Mephisto's Wrath, the boss battle box for Marvel United Midnight. This is a Kickstarter exclusive box, just like the other boss battles have been for the most part, I think. And it works similarly to Galactus and his heralds. Yes, you are going to get Mephisto, and yes, he is going to have plenty of fire effects on his miniature. But Mephisto is going to have three minions. Minions who work in tandem with him when you battle him. And those minions are Blackheart, Jack-O-Lantern, and Mephista. And Jack-O-Lantern is also going to have fire effects on his mini because that's going to look amazing. Just like with Thanos and the Black Order or Galactus and his heralds, you can fight Mephisto all by himself. Or you can fight Mephisto's minions and then lead your way up to him. And this, of course, will simply be called Mephisto's Wrath Mode. And you can also fight each one of his minions individually as their own unique villain. I need this in my life. Mephisto's Wrath will come with the Dream Dimension, the Nightmare Realm, the Below Place, and Mephisto's Throne. Mephisto's Throne is going to be a special location. It's his starting location. You can only use it when you're playing against him. It's going to have a red back, just like the Thanos ones had a gold back. I don't know what it's going to do, but it's going to be something special. And if you remember from Seasons Your, let's take Season 3, right? If you pre-ordered, you got the core box and you would get uh, the Galactus box in Season 3, right? Uh, and as a pre-order bonus, they give you a bonus hero that I throw in there. Uh, in this case, it was Iron Lad, right? Well, I wanted to do something similar. So for people who pre-order Marvel United Midnight, they'll get the core box, they'll get Mephisto's Wrath, and as a bonus, they will get the hero mini, Mr. Knight. Yes, it's technically a reskin, but Mr. Knight is going to play so much differently than Moon Knight because he's not Mark Spector. He's Steven. He's doing things completely different. Mr. Knight just has such a cool look. I know painters are going to love playing around with his mini. This is going to be a lot of fun, and it seemed like the perfect thematic choice to throw in as a little bonus thank you for people who pre-order the core box and the main boss battle box. But there's a lot more to come. Let's keep chugging on, because now that we have this, it's time to talk about stretch goals. My list of stretch goal characters is basically just everybody else who I couldn't fit into a thematic box that just needed to be represented in Marvel United uh, because I like them a lot and I want them to be part of the game. So we're going to go in alphabetical order here and we're going to just pace ourselves as if we are actually watching each of these being unlocked. The first stretch goal we are going to unlock is a hero that I think a lot of people will be happy to see. Maybe a hero that we wanted to see in a certain TV show recently. Abigail Brand. Complete with her green hair and her cool sunglasses, Abigail Brand is going to be a force to be reckoned with. She's a hero who can stand up with the best of them and dish out justice. And we're going to need all the justice we can because our next villain may be confined to a chair, but his brain can run laps around ours. I'm talking about Alistair Smythe the Spider-Man villain from the near and dear era of my heart. And Alistair Smythe is going to have a bunch of spider slayers working as his henchmen across the board. He's going to be so much fun. And yes, because he is a Spider-Man villain, he will also come with a Sinister Six module. So you can throw him in to Sinister Six Assembled. Now it's time to unlock a character that I'm very excited for. This character fits in with the Marvel United Midnight theme very well. The Ancient One. The Ancient One is also going to come with translucent yellow plastic on their miniature uh, because of all the magic stuff that's always happening from the fingers that I just love that the sorcerers do in Marvel. The Ancient One is such a cool character. I love wise classic mentor characters. I love all the Yodas and Mr. Miyagi's and Uncle Iroh's of the world. So the Ancient One needed to be in this game for me. Next up is another supernatural hero, somebody who I wasn't too familiar with, but became very popular, uh, and I learned about her through Marvel Snap, of all places, and that is Angela. 
Angela is going to be cool too because she's a big angel. She's got wings, so her mini is going to look awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun playing as Angela, but her mini is not going to look quite as awesome as the next hero we are going to unlock. And this one is probably going to have to be oversized just based off of what we know about the character. And that is someone we've all wanted, Armor. Armor is going to probably have to come with a translucent red shell that goes around her. Hopefully something that can come apart so people can paint her like they did with Nemesis. And the Meeple Monkey and I talked about what Armor could do and built her from the ground up using nothing but some Excel spreadsheets and had a hell of a good time doing it. And you can see that in the video that I put in the link in the description below. Armor is somebody that a lot of people wanted. She's an X-Man, so we wanted to fill out that roster. And now here she is. We got her. And we also have a dastardly villain who lives in the depths of Atlantis. You already had Tiger Shark in an expansion box. Let's get his buddy out on the field. Let's get Atuma, the constant thorn in Namor's side. Atuma is also going to come with sexy water effects on his miniature. He's going to be big and strong like any Atlantean. He's going to have that big thing on his head. Next is another villain. And this one is very upset with you. And he is going to leap over your head because his name is Batroc the Leaper. Batroc the Leaper is kind of a punchline. But we got two great appearances from him in the MCU. I like this guy. He's fun. Uh, I just want to see him in the game. I want to see what he can do. He'll probably do a lot of leaping, I would imagine. And his suit looks cool, so throw him in there. He's a colorful, fun character. Next, we have a hero, a very powerful hero that I know a lot of fans have been wanting to see. And it's time to throw him into the mix. We are unlocking Blue Marvel. Blue Marvel is just, he's a legendary status hero. He's super strong. He's just, there's a lot going on here. We wanted him. We got him. Ooh, I spy something purple off the starboard bow. We have our first anti-hero in the stretch goal box that we're about to unlock. It is a supernatural character by the name of Damon Hellstrom. Now, I have to look up this guy. I didn't know about him before, but he fits the theme well. He has a lot of connections to Mephisto. He has a lot of connections to the whole supernatural world, but I'm not going to tell you about what he can do yet. He's an anti-hero. So as a hero, he's, you know, you know what to expect. He's a hero who can walk around and help you dish out damage to the bad guys. But as a villain, put a pin in him for now. Next is a hero who not only suits the theme, but a lot of people wanted him. He looks cool. He's from my trading card days. We have unlocked Dark Hawk. To me, Dark Hawk just spells... 90s Marvel along with Deathlock and their names rhyme too so the two of them could totally start a band and I think they probably will eventually if I have anything to say about it. Darkhawk has been unlocked. Now it's time to unlock another hero and this one might be I'm not going to say controversial but it's I feel like a lot of people would say I don't want this guy but you know what this is my Marvel United campaign. I want him. I'm going to throw him in. It's Dum Dum Dugan. I love everything about this guy. I love his little hat. I love his mustache. I love that. Sometimes he's got a thick Irish accent and sometimes he doesn't. It's inconsistent, but I don't care. I like Dum Dum Dugan. He's a lot of fun. Up next, we are unlocking another hero, the Eternal Eros. He's also known as Star Fox, but I didn't want to call him that because that sounds like a video game. I'm just going to call him Eros. He's an Eternal, so we've got more Eternals on the way. You know from that box I mentioned, I didn't talk about all of them. It's a safe bet that the rest are coming on this list. Now we have a very slippery villain to unlock, and it's going to be difficult getting a grip on her, and that will be Ghost. And I'm going with the way Ghost was depicted primarily in Ant-Man and the Wasp, because that was just such a cool version of the character. She looked awesome. I love her suit. Ghost's mini is also going to come with translucent parts, the same way that Invisible Woman came with the translucent white parts. She's going to have that same phasing look to her. Ghost is going to be really cool. I can't wait to face off against her. I say this as if she's actually being made. Somebody please make this. Next is another hero and another Eternal. It's Gilgamesh. This guy was a lot of fun in the movie. He made a giant blueberry pie. I think it was blueberry and it looked amazing. I like him. I like the Eternals. I want him. Let's get him in there. The next character we have to unlock has been watching us for a long time. And it's only fair that he finally step up and help his Asgardian friends. Please welcome Heimdall. It's high time we unlocked Heimdall. Everybody loves this dude. Why do we not have him yet after three seasons? Heimdall's in the game now. Case closed. Another hero is making her way into the stretch goal box, and her name is Hellcat. We kind of saw Hellcat in the MCU a little bit, even though it was kind of a strange Netflix thing. Uh, but Hellcat, as she looks here, is going to show up in Marvel United Midnight as a stretch goal. The next stretch goal is a supernatural villain. It's The Hood. He works with Mephisto often. 
So often, in fact, that he is going to come with a set of cards where you can swap him out with one of Mephisto's minions when you play Mephisto's Wrath. Kind of like how you could swap out Silver Surfer for one of the other Heralds of Galactus. The Hood is somebody I didn't know much about. He's more, I think, of a modern character, but I know enough about him to know that he fits right in here. It's time to unlock another anti-hero and another Eternal, and I'm talking about Icarus. And this is going to make people upset because when I have called Icarus an anti-hero, people got mad and said, No, that's only in the movie! That doesn't count! And I'm like, well, you know, the movie should count a little bit because that was a damn cool movie. And the idea of Icarus being so blinded by his own programming, so to speak, uh, that he became a villain, there's a lot to unpack there. I love that so much about that film. So I have made Icarus an anti-hero because I want to. Next, we're unlocking a villain who comic book fans will tell you he doesn't matter. He's nothing. And they might be right. But MCU fans will tell you he is arguably the most important villain the MCU has ever given us. And that is Ironmonger. I loved, loved Jeff Bridges' Ironmonger. He's still one of my, like, top five favorite MCU villains to this day. I want to recreate that. I want to pit Iron Man against Iron Monger just because of how great he was in that movie. This is a villain I just want to see. I don't care. Come at me. I want him in the game. He's going in. He's a stretch goal. Next, we're unlocking a very cool hero that X-Men fans are going to be happy to see. It's our favorite Savage Landian, Kazar. The jungle man who's like if Fabio and Tarzan had a love child. Kazar is really cool. I like this dude a lot. He's going to be fun to play as if this ever becomes real. He's almost as fun as my favorite Eternal, Kingo. Kingo's just really cool. He just seems like a swell guy. Camille Nanjani played him to a T, and I want all the Eternals, so we are unlocking Kingo. Next, we are unlocking a very unique hero, and I challenge people out there, homebrew people, to figure out how to play with her, and that is Madam Web. Madam Web is going to be difficult because her powers seem unlimited. Uh, her mini's going to be cool, though, because she's in a big old chair. Uh, but I just want to see what we can do if we have Madam Web in this game. She's a staple of 90s Spider-Man, as far as I'm concerned, so I wanted to throw her in. The next hero we are unlocking is another classic-ish X-Man, Magma. First time I met Magma was in the video game X-Men Legends for the Xbox. And she was cool. I was like, yeah, she fits. I'm on board with this girl. Magma's mini is going to have translucent fire effects because of course it is. And yeah, there's Magma. Now it's time to unlock our first oversized villain mini of this campaign anyway. I don't know. I'm debating whether to have Mephisto be oversized and like sitting in his throne, maybe. But this will definitely have to be oversized. And it'll definitely have to be sitting because this villain is Master Mold. Now, Master Mold is the leader of the Sentinels. He's a gigantic Sentinel who makes the other ones, and he's big and evil, and, you know, we don't like him. He's bad. He's bad news. Um, with Master Mold, I think the best way to do his miniature without making him bigger than Galactus, because nobody should be bigger than Galactus, so I don't want him to be bigger than Galactus, but the best way to do his miniature would have him be the exact same size as a Sentinel figure, but he's sitting down. So it tells the brain that if this guy stood up, he'd be bigger than a sentinel. So if you put the two together, it still looks like he's bigger than the sentinels. Next, we are unlocking another anti-hero, one that I have been salivating for since the Black Panther movie. I'm talking about M'Baku the Man-Ape. M'Baku is such a cool character. He's my favorite Wakandan. I love this dude. He needs to be in the game. And he's an anti-hero because uh, from what I've read, M'Baku, uh, you know, goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with T'Challa a lot. And you saw some of that in the movie, too. Uh, so he, he can be kind of a jerk sometimes, and he can be your best friend. So perfect anti-hero material. Alphabetically speaking, the next hero we are unlocking is also a Wakandan that has been sorely missing from the ranks. Give it up for Nakia. We've unlocked Nakia. She's going to have her discs. I can't believe we don't have M'Baku and Nakia yet. It's astonishing to me, but now they're unlocked in this game that doesn't exist yet, so you're welcome. Next, we're unlocking a hero that I'm very excited to see because I know very little about her, and I want to know more, and that is Namor's cousin, the clone, Namorita. Of course, Namorita's mini will also have water effects on it because I love that so much, and now we have a female version of Namor, but she's a clone, so she can have some cool clone powers that Namor doesn't. I also think because she's a clone, it would be cool if her mini was like the mirror image of Namor's mini, but whatever they want to do, they can do. Next is a very supernatural villain 
that needs to be put up against the likes of Doctor Strange, and that is Nightmare, the villain that we all thought we were getting in the Doctor Strange sequel before they flipped the script on us. Nightmare is a terrifying force to be reckoned with and will probably be one of the more difficult villains in this campaign, even though Mephisto will be the most difficult because it just makes sense. He has to be. Next, we're unlocking a hero. Now, if you remember back in the core box, we had a little hero named Manphibian. Manphibian is part of a group of heroes that makes me very excited. Another person you might know from this group of heroes is Werewolf by Night. And this group of heroes is called the Legion of Monsters. Well, we need to unlock more members of the Legion of Monsters, starting with the one that I like the most, Nkantu, the Living Mummy. I mean, look at this. He's so cool looking. I love the way mummies look. Nkantu, the Living Mummy, is going to help flesh out the roster of the Legion of Monsters. But he's not the last one to unlock. We still have more. Next, we are unlocking Fastos, another Eternal. He makes stuff, right? Fastos makes all their equipment. He's the tinkerer. So Fastos can be all about giving people tokens, cobbling together weapons, maybe because now we have equipment cards. So maybe he can give equipment to heroes who don't have an equipment card. Next is another character who interacts with the Eternals a lot. Uh, he's just fun and I want to see him in the game. Pip the Troll. We are unlocking Pip the Troll as a playable hero. If we can have dupe, we can have anybody. We're unlocking Pip the Troll. It's settled. Here comes another anti-hero. From the world of Spider-Man, we are unlocking the Prowler. The Prowler fits anti-hero to a T because sometimes Hobie Brown does good things, sometimes he does bad things. And also, his costume is almost the exact same color as the minis that they use for anti-heroes in this game, so it works perfectly. I want the Prowler to be in this game so badly, and I'm sure plenty of people do too. I'm shocked he did not come in the Spider-Geddon box, but it is what it is. We've got the Prowler, and as a Spider-Man villain, he will also come with a module to let you use him in Sinister Six Assembled. Next, we're unlocking a hero who might be a little bit OP, but whatever. It's Psylord, the grown-up son of Sue and Reed Richards. Psylord is very, very powerful from what I can gather. Um, I don't know that much about him, but I know he's a big deal, so I wanted to put him in here. We have Psylord. Next, we're unlocking a hero who's been known to cross paths with Spider-Man many, many times, and that hero is Puma. Puma is this really cool hero. He's like a jungle cat and he prowls the rooftops of New York. I've always liked the idea of Puma, but you don't see him too often in Spider-Man stuff. He's kind of low key. So I wanted to give Puma some love and I threw him in to the stretch goal box. It's now time to unlock a time traveling villain, a version of a time traveling villain anyway. We have gotten Kang the Conqueror and we have gotten Immortus but I want to unlock Rama Tut because why not? I want to see what Rama Tut does that's different from what the other Kangs do. He just looks so cool, right? Why would I not want him in there? And you know what? While we're at it, let's jump ahead a bit. Let's unlock another version of Kang who is a bad dude who does bad things, the Scarlet Centurion. We're unlocking him too. Now you have four different versions of Kang to choose from. Five if you count Iron Lad. You could have a whole Kang Jamboree, a Kang Boree. I'm going to do that. In fact, we're all going to do that because Marvel United Midnight is going to come with a special extra game mode that this is the perfect spot to talk about. It is called Council of Kangs. And the Council of Kangs is a brand new challenge that players can take on. Just like with the Infinity Gauntlet, where you fought a bunch of members of the Black Order and then worked your way to Thanos, you will fight Scarlet Centurion, then Rama Tut, then Kang, and then finish it off with Immortus, because I think he's going to be the hardest one of the four. But a gauntlet of Kangs to go up against, this is going to provide a really cool, fun new challenge for Marvel United players. Council of Kangs mode is happening. After that, we're going to unlock a hero that a lot of people in the channels and chats have been asking for since day one, and that is Richter. So you finally have Richter, everybody who wanted Richter, there he is. Uh, I can't remember what pocket of the X-Men world he completes, but he's completed it now. We have Richter. And I spy another supernatural anti-hero, and it is going to be Satana. And now that we have Satana, who can be played as a hero, we can also finally take that pin out of Damon Hellstrom and talk about 
these two because when you want to play with Satana as a villain, she actually gets paired up with Damon Hellstrom. They work in tandem as a pair of villains, kind of like Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. These two are going to be running around the board causing untold supernatural havoc and it is your job to stop them and then make them your friends so that they can play alongside you. But the supernatural devilishness doesn't stop there because we've got another villain to add to the ranks. We are unlocking Celine. This is a villain I knew nothing about, but again, she got mad love in the multiverse comments section, so I wanted to throw her in. But the supernatural world has heroes too, and one of them is Sira. She's going to be a lot of fun, and because she goes hand in hand with Angel, I believe uh, they're married, but kind of like how Mr. Fantastic works well with Invisible Woman and how Hulkling works well with Wiccan, I thought, let's have Sira work well with Angela. So the two of them, if you team them up, they do a lot of cool stuff. Next, we're unlocking a hero that makes me happy because it's another character from the 90s cartoons that I want to see adapted into the game, and that is Bishop's little sister, Shard. She might seem like a strange choice, but Shard shows up quite a bit in the X-Men cartoon to the point where I felt like, okay, I'm missing her now. Because we've seen her so much, it feels like she should be part of this game. Because uh, the game has represented the cartoon fairly well, so I wanted to throw Shard in there. If we can get Banshee and Siren, we can get Bishop and Shard, right? It, it, why not? Uh, they even have the same initials. Go figure. And now it's time for another anti-hero and a Spider-Man anti-hero to boot, and that is Silver Sable. She's just this cool character that you always hear about in Spider-Man lore, but nobody ever really cares about adapting her. Nobody ever wanted to put her in a movie, and I get it. She's just kind of like Black Widow, but she wears silver instead of black, right? It, it's for the most part. Anyway, I'm sure I'm not giving her credit where it's due. But Silver Sable as an anti-hero just makes sense to me. She'd be a great hero, plus she'd be a great villain, and you can add her to Sinister Six Assembled Mode. Boom, there you go. We're going to stay in the Spider Universe, and we're going to unlock a hero from across the Spider-Verse. We are unlocking May Mayday Parker, Spider-Girl, the grown-up daughter of Peter and Mary Jane. Spider-Girl, right? Let's get her in there. Why not? Next, we are unlocking, I think, our final Eternal, and it's Thena. And Thena is so damn cool. She's got that golden sword. I mean, we need this. We need this in our game. Let's get Thena in here, please. But another villain from the supernatural side of things is going to make things difficult. The core box already gave us his woods, so now it's time for the stretch goals to give us the man himself, the Wendigo, who is a terrifying villain who I first encountered in the X-Men Wolverine video game. He's bad news. He's going to be difficult. It's going to be one of those hard ones, but I want Wendigo. I also want the villain Whiplash. He was kind of an outlier. I almost didn't include him, but I decided let's put Whiplash in there so that we can get another MCU villain in here because I like that. I want to get the MCU villains all up in this grill. So we have Whiplash as another cool villain to go up against. Next, we're unlocking a hero who I think has been sorely missing from a lot of Marvel content lately, and that is White Tiger. White Tiger is a real cool character, and she hangs out with Spider-Man sometimes. She's young, so she's got, you know, she's hanging out with the younger crowd. There's rumors that Jenna Ortega might play her, but at this point there's rumors that Jenna Ortega might play everybody, so whatever. Now we're going to unlock a Fantastic Four villain that I think would be fun to see, and that's the Wizard. He's got that big pink thing on his head. He looks kind of funny, but I think the Wizard could be pretty cool. He's kind of like a tinkerer kind of character, making psionic devices and whatnot. I'm excited to see him, but not as excited as I am to see a villain that's been missing, drastically missing, from Marvel United for three seasons, and that is Shu Wen Wu, otherwise known as the Mandarin, right? Even though we found out, you know, Shu Wen Wu is his actual name, and it's better to call him that anyway, so we're going to call him Shu Wen Wu. Such a classic Marvel villain, man. He needs to be in this game. I need to have him go up against Iron Man, because that was pure 90s for me. I need to have him go up against Shang-Chi. I just need him. I need him in my life. We're getting Shu Wen Wu. And while we're here, the next person we're going to unlock is our final anti-hero, and it's his daughter from the movie, Xu Xiaoling. She's going to be our last anti-hero of Marvel United Midnight, because uh, she can be bad, she can run the Ten Rings and, you know, be like a crime lord, but she can also be cool and help out her brother Shang-Chi. Yes, I'm going purely based off the MCU, but sue me, this is my ideal season four. Next, we are unlocking another villain that is straight out of the MCU, and that is the villain version of Yellow Jacket, right? I want to see this. I want an Ant-Man villain, but more importantly, I want a villain who can do what Ant-Man does. I want to see what happens in the game 
when a villain has the shrinking and growing powers and what that does to the heroes and how difficult it would be to fight him. I want to really work on making this guy tough to beat. In fact, in the same way that Mole Man came with his own Monster Island location, I'm going to have Yellow Jacket come with his own location too. It's a special one called the Quantum Realm. And part of Yellow Jacket's mechanics, the only part of it that I'm going to work out, is that at some point he can drag you into the Quantum Realm or he can go hide there. Uh, and when you're stuck in there with him, it's bad news for you. Uh, so the Quantum Realm is going to present a lot of issues and add a cool new layer to the game where you really do feel like you are being shrunk down and Yellow Jacket's just having his way with you. And let's unlock one final villain, who's also from a Marvel movie. Let's see what happens with Yon rog I know he's not anybody's favorite villain, he's just a Kree dude who's kind of a dick, but let's just see Yon rog They have taken villains that I did not really care about much, like Brood Queen, and turned her into a very interesting battle. The Brood Queen fight is intense, I still haven't beaten her. So let's see what you can do with Yon rog Let's take a villain that nobody cares about and make Marvel United fans care about him. And the last character that we are unlocking in our stretch goal box is our final hero that we need to fill out the Legion of Monsters, the zombie, Simon Garth. I'm not a zombie fan. I don't really like zombie movies that much. I find them boring. But the idea of playing as a group of monsters where now you have the zombie, you have Encanto the Living Mummy, you have Morbius the Living Vampire, you have Manphibian, and you have Werewolf by Night. Come on. Come on. That sounds like the most fun thing ever. It's happening. It fits the theme. We're getting zombie. And that's the stretch goal box. That's all of it. But that's not all we're getting in Marvel United Midnight. There's always more cool stuff to unlock and discover, just like with a real campaign. So now that we know primarily all the characters we're getting, let's talk about some of the game modes we are getting. We've already discussed the Masters of Evil Assembled and how that's going to work, and the additional characters who can be swapped into the Sinister Six, which now include Silver Sable, Prowler, Alistair Smythe, and the Jack-O-Lantern, as well as everybody from the Lethal Foes box. Marvel United Midnight will also add new characters to all of the team decks that we got in Marvel United Multiverse. For example, we already got a Generation X team deck, so you can go ahead and add all of these new characters to that team deck, but there's also going to be new team decks to complement the new teams we've gotten in Midnight. Those decks are the Legion of Monsters, because that's a given, Runaways, Eternals, Lady Sif and the Warriors 3, and a special one called Spider Army. I want to see what we can do with all of these new spider characters thrown together in a different mix, so I went with Spider Army. And as I was adding characters and mostly villains from the MCU, I got to a point where I was like, well, we can't have this person because it just wouldn't be feasible. But anything's feasible with Marvel United. So I am proud to present the Ego Villain Mode, where you can face off against Ego as the villain. Except he doesn't get a miniature because reasons. We all know why he can't get a miniature. He's a planet. That's okay. Ego is going to be his own pack of six locations. That's it. That's how you fight Ego. Of course, he gets a dashboard too, and the dashboard will have that picture of his face that we all know and love, and the locations will all do terrible things to you. That's basically how he attacks you, because you're standing on him. You can now recreate Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 if you want to with the Ego Villain Mode, and it's super cheap. No pressure on Seamon or Spin Master. All they have to do is make six new locations and a new rules dashboard. Boom. We've got Ego. We've got another villain right? That's what we want to do. We want to add villains. Then I realized that we got the pet expansion in Multiverse, and now we have more pets we can add to that. So I'm proud to present Marvel United Midnight's Pet Expansion 2, which comes with six new pets. And those pets are Dogpool. He's a Deadpool character. Yeah, he's going to be fun. Put Dogpool in there. Bats, who is Doctor Strange's glowing ghost Basset Hound. I really had to dig deep through the Marvel lore to find Bats, but he's a glowing ghost hound? I mean, what better way to sum up Marvel United Midnight, right? Even the pets are supernatural. Then there's Lucky the Pizza Dog, who's just a cool character that, you know, needs some love and he's got a great name. And then we have some pets that just need to be thrown into the mix because their owners are already thrown into the mix. Like Zabu, the saber-toothed tiger, who goes hand in hand with Kazar of the Savage Land. He is joining pets. And last but not least, I thought I 
had six pets, but I actually only have five. That's okay. Last but not least is Old Lace, the Velociraptor who hangs out with the Runaways. But there's still more we can do, isn't there? There's still one last big thing that we can do to shake up how Marvel United is played and make us look at the first three seasons in a whole new light. So, given that our theme is Marvel United Midnight, given that our theme is Supernatural, and given that our primary antagonist this time around is Mephisto, what does Mephisto do? He makes deals. He signs contracts. He makes people do things they wouldn't otherwise do. With that in mind, I have decided to include a game-changing mode to Marvel United Midnight called Spirit of Vengeance mode. And the best part is, for Simon and Spin Master, it's going to be cheap to produce too. Spirit of Vengeance mode is a mode where you can take any hero from across Marvel United and play against them as a villain. Thematically, this hero has signed some kind of desperate bargain with Mephisto. And now, as a result of that bargain, they have become the new Spirit of Vengeance. To mark this, instead of reprinting everybody as a red mini, because that would be ridiculous, you are going to get a bunch of little plastic rings made out of the translucent fire effect that you see on all the fire minis, right? So it's just a plastic ring of that fire, and it fits underneath any of the miniatures, bases. You'll get different sized ones for different sized heroes, because now we have big heroes. But essentially, all you do is you take, let's say, Captain America, you put him on this fiery base, and he has now become a spirit of vengeance, and you have to face off against Captain America as a villain. How's it going to work? I don't know. I'm not smart enough to figure that out. Probably using some kind of mixture between the U.S. agent villain rules and maybe a new deck of Spirit of Vengeance villain cards that would probably work best that'll come in this campaign. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be thematic and cool just to, you know, see what happens if Spider-Man signs a contract with Mephisto and now you got to fight Spider-Man because he's the new Spirit of Vengeance? I would love this so much and it just makes perfect sense with what we've got going on here it is the most thematic most game-changing most fun addition i could possibly add to marvel united to make it even more special than it already is but wait there's one more thing some people don't want all of this that's fair they don't have to get it all some people might consider getting it all if we sweeten the pot just a little bit. So, in honor of Kickstarter campaigns your, we have one final hero miniature who is strictly a bonus for anybody who went all in. And that hero very appropriately is the Phantom Rider. This absolutely fantastic badass cowboy ghost rider from the Old West who signed his own deal with Mephisto back in the day is going to be a playable hero with a slightly oversized mini because he's on a big old horse that you will get if you go all in on the Marvel United campaign. You can finally live out your dreams of playing as Sam Elliott in a board game. As Sam himself would say, it's about damn time. That was a horrible Sam Elliott. I'm sorry. And that is Marvel United Midnight. A hypothetical but damn sexy fourth season of everybody's favorite Marvel board game that, again, I legally am totally fine with the developers using. As long as I get a free copy. That's all I want. Uh, but tell me what you think in the comments below. Tell me what you think of this Marvel United Midnight Kickstarter campaign and how it could all be laid out and if it works for you, if it doesn't work for you. I'm sure there are still characters I completely missed, right? I just, characters I don't know about or I forgot about, but I found a nice round number for everything and I'm really, really satisfied with what we ended up with. So that was a lot of detail and a lot of stuff thrown at you and clip art and text, whatever, but thank you so much for sticking with me this whole time. Thanks for watching, as always. We love having you here on Digital Charcuterie. We'll see you here again as we keep making the wait for Marvel United Multiverse a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. Until next time, my friends, may you be the masters of your own universe.